Now, there are two types of tax that we need to distinguish. One is direct taxes, the other is indirect taxes. Um, direct taxes tend to be on things such as profits um, or income or wealth. Um, and the incidence of the tax can't be shifted onto anyone else, unlike indirect taxes. So key examples in most countries are income taxes. Uh, income taxes are simply a tax on different forms of income. The main form for most people, of course, is their work and the wages as, and income resulting from work. Um, income tax rates in most countries tend to increase as people's incomes increase. Um, we'll come back to that. Corporation tax is a tax on corporate profits. Uh, capital gains tax is a tax on a capital gain that an investor might make. So say you buy a business for £100,000 or property and then you sell it in a year's time for £150,000. You've made £50,000. So the state will take some of that capital gain from you. Uh, another tax which is really like a different form of income tax is simply national insurance and that's a tax on employment paid by the employer and the employee. Uh, indirect taxes, the key taxes are VAT uh, which is sometimes known as an ad valorem tax, and that's a percentage tax um, on most products um, apart from children's clothes and food and reading matter, newspapers, magazines. Um, VAT, um, however, can be passed on, so the incidence of the tax can be passed on to the buyer to, the some, to some extent, which is the sort of thing you analyse in microeconomics. And indeed, excise duty or specific expenditure taxes are often on demerit goods such as wine or beer, <coughs> particularly on spirits, uh, t um, tobacco, uh, petrol, etc. So, um, if when, we, when we're analysing taxes, there are the, the three little con concepts here that it's useful to know about. Uh, and that taxes tend to be either progressive, proportional, or regressive in effect. So a progressive tax is one where the marginal rate of tax increases as incomes increase. In other words, the proportion of tax as part of income that people pay increases as their incomes increase. So, for example, income tax is often progressive. So, for example, you might pay tax on the first £10,000 of what you earn, and that's called the tax allowance. And then you might pay 20% on the next bit you earn, say up to £30,000, and then over £30,000 you might pay 40% on everything you earn over that amount until you get to 60%, so 60000 Then then over 60000 you might pay 50%, okay? And that would be fairly progressive, okay, because as your income goes up, your marginal rate of tax will, will increase, as will your average rate of tax, of course, um, as you earn more. So. The income tax in many countries is, is, proportion, is progressive. Um, a proportional tax is one where the marginal rate of tax stays constant as your income goes up. So that will be the same percentage on everything. So as your income goes up, you pay proportionately as a percentage, okay, the same amount of tax. And then we've got regressive taxes. Okay. Regressive taxes are where the marginal rate of tax falls as your income increases. So as you become richer in a sense your income goes up, you pay a lower um, proportion of your income in tax. So uh, examples of regressive taxes in the UK uh, tend to be VAT and excise duty. So people of higher income groups uh, don't necessarily consume that much more gin or whiskey or, or other demerit goods, but they, they, as a proportion of their income, it's a much lower proportion. And um, the TV license is another little example um, of a, a kind, effectively a kind of tax that is pretty regressive in the UK. So um, the whole tax system may balance out to be progressive or regressive. And of course, this is quite an important aspect um, of determining inequality in, in a society. Okay. Uh, and there's two, two other little concepts that's important to be aware of. If you have an income tax, and say at £40,000 we go from paying 20% tax, say to 50% tax, at £40,000. But what happens over time is people's incomes will increase with inflation. But if the tax boundary, the actual threshold, doesn't change, 
then what will happen is people will be dragged uh, into higher tax brackets and pay more of their income in tax. And this is quite a sneaky way, often known as stealth taxes, that chances use. By not increasing those tax brackets with inflation, then people creep into higher tax brackets. And the, the US call this uh, bracket creep. Okay, so uh, a, a more usual term is fiscal drag. People are dragged into higher tax bands and end up paying more tax. And they, they, simply because their earnings are going up with inflation. And so if the tax brackets for income tax aren't increased in line with inflation, we get fiscal drag. It benefits the government and individuals pay more tax. Um, another aspect that's um, in some textbooks uh, a key, key thing is fiscal boost. Um, I'll explain with a little prop. Imagine this is a bottle of gin. It's not lovely, pure water it says. Anyhow, imagine this is gin and uh, we pay five pounds for this gin and there's two pound fifty tax on that. Right, over time, say this becomes seven pounds with inflation. But the tax on this gin is still two pound fifty. Therefore, who's gaining? Well, the government is losing out on tax revenue uh, and we're gaining because in real terms, the tax we're paying on the gin is becoming less. It's becoming proportionally less for the bottle of gin. Rather a good thing, you might say. So this is known as fiscal boost because it's uh, um, a boost to the uh, consumer uh, and the government, of course, loses out on tax revenue. Okay, so it, it's useful to have some examples of the key taxes and the key terms such as progressive, proportional and regressive. Thank you for